eyes are turning to you We turn to you Hope is stirring Hearts are yearning for you We long for you Cause when we see He is risen! He is risen indeed. Just a hint, that's your uh, echo to this. In case you, you didn't know, that's something the church has done. It's kind of a really fun part of what we do. We're so glad that you've decided to start your week off with us here, especially this week as we've just gone through Holy Week. We have so much to be thankful for. We start off every Sunday sharing those things. What I would love for you to do in the comment section below is just to type out the things that you're thankful for. Uh, where you're tuning in from, what you're thankful for, what God's been doing in your life. And feel free to, to comment in, in that chat section throughout the whole service today. If you have prayer requests or, or just things that come to mind, share those there. But we would love to hear uh, the encouraging things that God's been doing in your life as well. And now if you have your kids uh, running around, Pastor Steve has a message for them. Gather them up, bring them in, and uh, we'll turn it over to Steve. Hey, everyone. If you are young and young at heart, I've got a special message for you this morning. Hey, if you are like me, you love Easter, and I love Easter uh, for all of the reasons uh, that we celebrate Easter, but one of the reasons I love Easter is because of Easter baskets, and, and I've got a couple eggs in here, and I'm, I'm really kind of excited about this because, you know, I love Easter candy. Easter candy is super good, and one of my favorite Easter candies is the Sweet Tarts Ducks and Bunnies. I don't know if you've ever had those before, but those are my favorite, and I really hope that there's one of those in here. So I'm going to open this up and see what I've got here. Let's see. Whoa. Well, that's a rock. That's kind of weird. Well, I've got, I've got another one in here. Let me see what that one's like. Here we go. I'm going to open this one. Um, well, that's a flower. I wasn't expecting that. That's kind of weird. You know, that actually kind of reminds me of something. You know, the, the Easter story in the Bible, the women who went to the tomb, they weren't expecting what they found either. You know, they found that the stone had been rolled away. And what that meant was that Jesus had risen from the dead. And that is why we're celebrating Easter. And the awesome thing about that is because when Jesus rose from the dead, when, when that stone was rolled away and Jesus rose from the dead, he conquered sin and he conquered death. And really what that means is that just like this flower, we have new life. We have new life in Jesus Christ. And that is the awesome message of Easter. And one of the reasons why I love Easter so much is because of the new life that Jesus gives us. So this morning, as we celebrate Easter, let's celebrate that new life that we have in Jesus. See you guys later. Thanks, Steve. I can't wait to uh, have you back here. I, I miss you and Sonia a whole lot. We are also people of prayer, and we come into this time understanding that even though we're not together, we still can be joined in our hearts in prayer and our spirits in prayer. If you have things that you would like to pray for, again, put them in the comment section. We'll, we'll, we can add them to our prayer list if you would like. A few other ways you can uh, request prayer. Through our website, there's a place on the, the website in the very front that says request prayer. That comes right to us in email. We would love to uh, have you join that. Join our prayer chain. Again, go to our website. You can see that as an opportunity for you to, uh, to join that. Our Facebook page has a place where you can request prayer. Uh, we'd love to have you join us there too. Lots of different ways that we can connect in those things as well as we go through that. Uh, let's, let's just join our hearts now in prayer, wherever you are. Let's bow our heads, let's quiet our hearts, and let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the reason that we have to celebrate in your resurrection. We thank you that even though we're uh, apart, that we're united in your love, in your grace, and in, in our togetherness. God, we lift up the people around who have been impacted by this. We, we lift up our healthcare workers and our doctors and our nurses and EMTs. We lift up our political leaders, our, our government leaders, God, who are making decisions for us. We pray that you would give them wisdom. We pray that you would give them unity as they go through this too. We pray for our community leaders and our church leaders, Father, as we figure out the best way to respond to these things. God, we pray for those people who have been impacted by getting the virus 
And we pray for them. We pray that you would be with them and strengthen them. We pray for those who are having challenges right now. We pray for those who have lost loved ones throughout all of this. God, we pray for those who are uh, sick in other ways and going through the challenges that are created by this time in our world. We pray for those who are uh, not feeling the best. We pray that you would help them in, in the isolation, in the quarantine times, God, to, to feel your comfort and your love. We pray for us as a, as a body of believers, Father, that we would do all that we can to, to put our faith into you, to stay grounded in who you are, to be ambassadors of who you are, salt and light during these times. Father, thank you so much for giving us your son, but giving us also the church. Uh, bring us together. Help us to lock arms, to walk through this, to stay together, to pray together, to grow together, to serve together through these things. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, another thing that we can do to be faithful stewards to the best of our abilities, to what God has called us to do, is to support uh, the church and the mission of the church. If you feel as though that God would still lay it on your hearts to give and you want to give, we want to honor that. You can do that a few ways. Uh, our church website has an online giving portal that you can do. You can also mail in your gifts or uh, give us a call and we'll, we'll arrange whatever needs to be. I want to thank Helen for uh, reading the scripture last week. I appreciate that as she uh, did that so well. It's just good to see other people's faces. And this week we have Derek Hadamaki who's going to be reading our scripture for us at this time. Good morning and welcome to our Easter morning service. Thanks for coming. Today I'll be reading from the book of John, chapter 20, 1 through 9. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over, looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth had been folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Well, we're back together again, and I'm so excited to be here. It's Easter. Nothing can stop that. He is risen, and uh, it, you have a place in this also. So anytime you hear, he is risen, you, you got to reply, he is risen indeed. Just make it your practice in your living room. Say it nice and loud. I can't wait, though, until we're back together again. I'm very thankful for technology. Awesome stuff. But I can't wait until this room is filled with you. And we're back together. I can't wait to celebrate, to hear that said in our congregation as we live out the truth of Easter. It's going to be a great time. I'm looking forward to that. I hope your week has been good as we've walked through Holy Week. Thank you for those who showed up on Monday, Thursday. Uh, we, we thought about Good Friday and the fact that Friday was there, but Sunday's coming. Well, Sunday's here. And we live in the truth. We celebrate the fact that He is risen. He's risen indeed. Over the last few weeks, we've been working our way through this blessed series. We've been asking the questions and wondering, what does it mean for us to be a blessing to others? How can we follow Jesus' lead and, and do the things that he did and see people the way that he did? The first week, we started with begin with prayer, and then the next week, we went to listen with care. The third week, we thought and studied on how Jesus used common things like eating together and food to bring people into a deeper relationship. Then last week, we, when we were together, we started to look at the first S, the serve with love. And we thought about what does it take to serve with love? Where do we start? What do we look at? Well, we start with the understanding that we have to be submitted to the king. We're living somewhere between, in Luke chapter 19, verses 14 and 15, where the king has gone. Jesus has, has lived his life. He died. He, he rose again. And now he's ascended into heaven. He's gone. But someday he's returning. And when he does, he's going to have a question that we're all going to have to answer. 
We're going to be held accountable for what did we do with him and his gift. What do we do with God's son and the way that he's gifted us to fulfill the mission he's left of going into the world to evangelize to the lost and to disciple believers all for his glory. We thought about how we really have three options. We can be like the faithful, trustworthy servant who, who took what uh, his king had given him and multiplied it. We can be like the unfaithful servant who, out of fear of what might happen to him, did nothing. Just kind of sat still and, and didn't want to lose out on anything. Or we could be like the third option of those in the crowd who didn't want the king, who hated the king, who wanted to rule their own lives. All three of those end in accountability, though, to the king when he returns. So we thought about how do we serve in love? Well, we start with being submitted to the king, to Jesus. This week, as we continue into the last Sunday of the Blessed series, we look at the last S, and it's share your story. And it's a great opportunity for us to think about our story. We're people who love stories. When we're kids, we're told nursery rhymes and bedtime stories, and we think about all of those characters from our childhood as we watched movies and we read books. Uh, Disney movies, for me, was a big part of my childhood. I, I loved watching them. As I've gotten older, I love a good book. I love an audio book. I, I like to watch movies and Netflix and just to see stories taken out. Throughout all of history, we've seen this, though, on the walls of caves and in the storytelling of people, of ancestors, passing things through. Stories are just a big part of our lives. My kids have picked up on this also. They do this thing where if we get in the car uh, at any point, if it's for any length of time, inevitably, at some point, this will happen. Okay. <laughs> Dad, can you tell us the story of when you stole money from Auntie Ashley and then used it on that video game? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, it was a good one. Some of their favorite stories are the times where uh, they want to know what me and Stacy did wrong. I think they're saving that up for the times that they do wrong so they can remind us of that, so there's, there's grace built in. But they love to hear the stories. Sometimes when we're around fires, they'll ask for us to share a story. A good campfire story is something my three boys love, and I, I started telling them one that scared them a little bit. It goes like this. In West Philadelphia, born and raised on a playground is where I spent most of my days. You get it though, right? They would panic and they would freak out because it wasn't the words of the story, it was in the way that the story was told. Well, today we're going to look at a lot of different stories. We're going to look at stories from people in Scripture. We're going to look at stories of people around us, of those who attend here. One of those individuals is a friend of mine, Carrie Taff. Uh, Paul and Carrie have been coming for a while. They're members here. Carrie's involved with Stacy in the women's Bible study. And she sent me a message that led to this conversation where I asked her if she would be willing to share her story. And she said, yeah. So we did. And I'm I would love for you to see a little bit more of Carrie. Let's watch. As a young adult and a new wife and a new mom, um, life started to get overwhelming and grow really fast. And I didn't have a relationship with God at the time. And yeah, we belonged to a church. We got our kids baptized. We went to church on special occasions, but I had no relationship with God. I had no conversations with him outside of church and I didn't ask for anything from him. Um, I didn't know what he would want with me. Um, so the stresses of life and parenthood and began to mount and my children's lives got bigger and I took it upon myself to just like hold their lives in my hands feeling like i was the only one responsible for like every aspect of their life and that got really heavy um really fast and um i remember at some point feeling like 
it was so heavy that it was just like pushing me into a hole in the ground and I was just going to like disappear. And, um, it started unraveling me even physically from the inside. It was making me sick. It was making me, um, ball up into a corner and cry. And, um, for years I hid it from everyone, even my husband and thinking it was something that was wrong with me. So once it started making me physically ill, I couldn't hide it anymore. You know, Paul had um, picked me up off the ground way too many times and um, we tried medication and um, different things, but nothing was working. Granted, in hindsight, God was knocking on my door the whole time. And I see now the little bits and pieces of him just kept plugging away at me thinking come on girl come on girl let me in let me in and um finally when i did open the door for him um the flood just came and i would sing the good good father out loud and just bawl and to feel his presence in me it it was just something i had needed for my whole life and looking back now i can't believe i didn't have him there i can't imagine how things might have been different for me so one of my first women's bible studies was ephesians on the armor of god and i remember first learning about how to trust him and the tools he had for me to deal with the stress and the anxiety and the physical um, effects it had on me. And I would stand in front of the mirror even like a, a superhero and I would put on my armor and I would put on my belt and I would put on my helmet and I would stand with my sword. And, and you know, I just, it was a great visual of all of those, that power that he gave back to me. I learned I could let go of my children's lives and and that he could love them more than I do even. When they were when they're finally left me and went out into the world that he would um care for them. That was hard to trust him with that, but um it was necessary for my health and um each moment still of each day is a choice to continue trusting him. I use a thankful prayer um, every day to remind me um, of everything I do have that's positive in my life, even though the, the negatives want to scream out at you. And I really think those thankful thoughts just push out all the negative. I really find it helpful to have reminders everywhere on my fridge, you know, on the bathroom mirror everywhere of the messages that God gives us and reminds us to trust him. That's what I got. Do you have any favorite scriptures or songs or any other helpful little tools for when you find yourself going back towards anxious thoughts or fears? I like to visualize um, God holding me and me being able to just like let go, like physically just let go of everything and he can just hold me like a father. Jesus has given me a uh, room to breathe and to have a faith that he has a plan for me and that just because my plan isn't working out just doesn't mean that i did it wrong but it's just that he has this grander plan for me that is much easier to see in hindsight and um when things aren't going my way i i just look forward to the ending because I know it's gonna be better than what I had planned. I like to control 
things. And uh, every day I struggle with um, giving that to him. But he keeps showing me more often and more often. Or maybe it's just me that my eyes are more open to it. But he knows what he's doing. <laughs> See, our stories bring us together. When we show up on a Sunday morning and we have our hair done and we look pretty, we can present to the world something other than really what reality is because our stories aren't always that neat and clean. Inside Carrie's story, there's parts that were challenging and hard and difficult, and there still parts are in my story. I have parts that are challenging and difficult and parts I'm still fighting through. But what happens when we share our stories? Could you relate to Carrie at all? See, that's what happens when we share our stories. We start to relate with one another. We start to come alongside one another. We can say, hey, me too. I struggle also. If it wasn't for Jesus, I would be in a mess. And what really becomes amazing when we share our stories is that those who are outside who don't know Jesus start to say, whoa, they're, they're not perfect. They're, they're not judgmental. They're, they're, they're broken too. It's the story of humanity is that, yeah, we're all broken. We all have a story to share. Derek read earlier about this woman, Mary Magdalene, who was at the tomb. And, and Mary's got a story also. We don't know a lot about the story, but what we do know is that she's mentioned in every single gospel story of the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. She's mentioned in all four. She's mentioned more than many others who are more prominent throughout Scripture. But what is her story? Do you know what her story is? Well, we don't know much. She's only mentioned really one other place in Scripture outside of the crucifixion and the resurrection story. Uh, that's found in Luke chapter 8. If you have your Bibles, grab them. We're going to be in uh, Luke chapter 8 for just a little while. In verses 1 through 3, we see and hear the story of Mary. Listen quickly and closely because it happens fast. Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out. Johanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod's household. Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. Did you catch it? Did, did you see the history that we get of Mary? Everything else from this point on will lead Mary to the cross and to the tomb. But what we see here is her story. She was captive in, with demon possession. When she came to Jesus, when he found her where she was, she was overran with just this infirmity of, of demon possession. And her life has changed, though. She is freed from those. She comes out from there. And at that moment on, she is so transformed by how Jesus put her right, how he saved her, that he became more to her. She dedicated the rest of her time in Scripture anyway, and probably the rest of her life to the cause of Christ. She would go along with him, with others, and support him financially with the things that they needed. Mary Magdalene was a follower of Jesus, whose life was being told. Her story was being written. At one point, her story had brokenness and demon possession and difficult, challenging, ugly things that isolated her from the world. But when she ran into Jesus, something drastically changes. And we see her at the cross. We see her at the tomb. And when we left her, at what Derek had read earlier, she's there. Peter and John had left now and had gone to tell the others what had happened, but she's still there. She was there in the darkness of the morning. It was a physical dark. The sunlight hasn't broken yet when she's there. But it was also a dark night of her soul as Christ was gone. The Savior of her life was no longer living. And, and she had heard probably what the apostles had heard, the disciples had heard, that he had to suffer these things and die and, and, and rise again. But that wasn't what was on her mind at this time. Her hurt was. The loss of her savior, her friend, her teacher. That's where she is. She's there alone staring at this empty tomb. And she looks in, though, and sees something that Peter and John did not see. 
we pick it back up in Scripture. If you have your Bibles, John chapter 20 is where we are. We'll pick it back up in verse 11. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who, who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've put him, and I will get him. Mary is broken again. She's lost Jesus. See, her life was put back together when Jesus was there. He was the one who did it, and now without him, she felt like she was falling apart again. Jesus asked a question. Who are you looking for? And in her thought, she thinks that he's done something with the body. She has no idea or inkling that he's back to life. She, she doesn't go there. She doesn't celebrate and rejoice. She's trying to find the body of her Savior. But that changes quickly. The tone in the room changes dramatically by just one word. In verse 16, Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I'm ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. One word changed the whole feeling for Mary. That word was just her name. See, when Jesus whispers her name, she comes alive again. When Jesus calls out our name and our brokenness, things are mended. Hearts become new. Hope is reborn. In this instant, Mary is coming back to her senses. She's been put back together again by something that will never be broken. And Jesus gives her a message. Go and tell my disciples that I'm returning to my father. But did you catch the rest of that? And to your father, my God and your God. Through Christ's life and death, resurrection and ascension, we become co-heirs with Christ. What rightfully belongs to him is now given to us. Nothing that we deserve is now given to us. We're entitled to things that we have no business being entitled to. Jesus goes and he sends Mary with a story to tell. She rushes back and she's obedient. She tells them what has happened. Have you ever had experiences like that? Where Jesus has called your name? I remember multiple times in my life where I've just heard that whisper, where I felt like I've gone too far, or I've messed things up too bad, where I've broken his trust. How could he ever love me? And I've, I've heard him in ways just whisper my name. It's a sweet sound. It's part of our story. And now it's part of Mary's story to go and Tell the good news. What happened in the darkness of that morning, as she was there in her brokenness again, ends in elation, ends it with a different story to tell because she had found Jesus again. Scripture is filled with stories like this, with people. The story of humanity is one of brokenness and redemption, sin and grace. I love the story of the woman at the well, probably because I'm reminded again of how Jesus sees people and goes out of his way for people that others would say aren't worth going out of their way for. Do you remember the story of the woman at the well? Jesus goes to Samaria where Jews aren't supposed to be, finds a woman in the middle of the day when no one is supposed to be drawing water at the well at the middle of the day, speaks to this Samarian woman, Samaritan woman, as a Jew, Men and women weren't supposed to talk, let alone Jews and Samaritans, but he does. And throughout that conversation, he ends up revealing to her that he's the Messiah, the one that she had been hearing all about. He tells her about her own life and her own sin, speaks the truth to her, but also offers her something different. 
She gets so overwhelmed by that, so changed by that, that she goes back to her community and she starts telling everyone. She tells her friends, her relatives, her acquaintances, her neighbors, her coworkers, her colleagues about this man who said everything and spoke everything about her, who came to her, spoke to her against all customs and rights and what was thought to be proper, and saw her. What's the result of that? She goes and shares her story with all of the people of the village and the Samaritans flock to him. In John 4, 39 and 42, many of the Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with him and he stayed two days. Because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we've heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. What would have happened if she didn't tell her story? What would have happened if she didn't risk it and tell all of those townspeople, the Samaritans, about this man? What would have happened if she didn't bring them there? What would happen if we don't tell our story? What would happen if shame and regret and grief causes us to shut down? What happens if we try to press those things down? What happens if we try to play church and we get nervous around our neighbors or these people who we have contact with because we don't want to share our story? See, there's beauty in the broken. There's beauty in a story that's ongoing. The Japanese have an ancient tradition with broken things. And it's bigger than just a broken pot. But when a broken pot or bowl would, would break, they would put it back together again by melting down gold or silver. Because what they realized is that broken things aren't necessarily something that have to be discarded. They see value in the experiences and the growth that comes from it. And when that broken pot is put back together with something more valuable, the whole thing is made more beautiful. It's made more valuable because of the brokenness. That's exactly what Jesus does. It's exactly what he did with his life, his death, his resurrection at Easter. He takes our brokenness and infuses himself in it and makes it extremely valuable. He sees the value of you. He doesn't see what the world sees. He doesn't look at it the way that you maybe look at it. He sees you completely and sees you as one who is worthy of his life and his death and his resurrection, worthy of sharing his sonship with. What's your story? Do you have a story? Of course you do. What's in your story? More importantly, who's in your story? If you're watching this today and your story doesn't include Jesus, how are you processing through all of those things? What is it that holds you together? I'm guessing that they fall flat because they did for me. They did for people like Carrie. They did for others who have looked for all kinds of ways to put ourselves back together again because what we share in common is brokenness. All of us. But what we also share in common is the solution to our brokenness, which is Jesus. So many times, though, we try it on our own. When you become under, when you become completely aware that you are powerless to put yourself back together again, that you are in need of, of the molten gold to fuse things back together in ways that you are incapable of on your own, you'll find that the answer is Jesus. That your story is in need the creator of all things, the savior of the world, the one who is the lover of our souls, the king who's worthy of ruling our lives. What's your story? What's in it? Gary's story is a good reminder for us that our stories are not yet finished, that they're being written even now. And as long as you're breathing, there's hope. As long as you're alive, there's hope. That Jesus is still seeking to save the lost. That he's left his church to be a part of his mission to share his love and his story with others. And he does that through our story of what he's done in our own lives. 
I think Carrie wraps it up pretty well when she says this. What would be the one thing that if they hear nothing else, that what's the one thing you want them to hear from your story? You know, God's unconditional love that, that he wants more for you than you could even imagine wanting for yourself. He's got great things planned that you might not think you deserve. Something like that. So Carrie, we're here together on Easter Sunday, listening to your story and just kind of reflecting on the beauty that is Easter. And what does, what does Jesus' gift to us mean to you in light of everything that you've been through? What does it mean to you to have a savior? It means that no matter that I didn't acknowledge him for the first half of my life, and no matter the bad choices I made, um, he still wants me and he wants the best for me and he won't give up on me. That's what his saving grace is to me. <laughs> And that's a story we're sharing. See, our stories start when we see Christ. We accept Christ. We submit to Christ. Our story is put back together. It's mended and made complete. As he grows us and expands us and forgives us and enables us to serve and to reach out to this world. That's what saving grace means. It's a gift that's made available to you because he's risen. Our stories. There's power in our stories. There's salvation in the story of Jesus. If you're looking, he's the answer. If you're broken, he's the answer. He's the answer for not just you and I, but for those around us. What would happen if we would be willing to share our story? If we would put aside our fears of what people might think of us or say to us, if we put aside our own ideas of rightness and pursued more righteousness, if we told our stories with humility and humbleness, understand that we didn't deserve his gift, but yet he offered it, what would happen if we got less concerned with pointing out the wrongs of everyone else, but simply talked about the one who saved us in the middle of our wrongs? What would happen if we did that? What would happen if Easter became more? What would happen if you shared your story with those around? What an opportunity we have to do just that. What an opportunity we have to live in the truth of what Easter is all about. He's risen. He's risen indeed. I hope it's a part of your story. If it's not, there's no better time than now to submit to the King, to lay your life down, to, to confess Him as your Lord and Savior, to accept that gift, and to start walking with Him. We would love to walk with you. Uh, none of us have any kind of idea of what it means to be perfect or any idea of even how to do things right all the time, but we've been given the scriptures that He's left for us. We've been given the Holy Spirit to walk. We've been given one another to share our stories to encourage each other, to walk together, to pray together, to grow together, to stay together. We want to do that. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today for your love for us. I thank you for your willingness to come as a humble servant to this world, to see us, to speak the truth about us, that we are sinful people that have fallen short, that we are in desperate need of a Savior. And you are willing. And God, I'm so thankful that you you sent Jesus, and that Jesus lived his perfect life, and he died a perfect life, a perfect death, and he rose again, and he's at your right hand, interceding on our behalf, Father. May we do all that you would have us to do for your fame, for your glory, your honor. God, may we submit to who you are and not to fear. May we focus our faith and not feed our fear, Father. May we be willing to share our story. May we, we, be, may we be willing to be vulnerable to each other, to speak the truth of our stories and what you are doing inside of us. Thank you for that.
Thank you for being a God who is a model of being a blessing. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Every Sunday, but especially this Sunday, we end in celebration because we are sinful people and Jesus overcame the world for us. Through him we have life. We sing of that. And we're going to do that. Well, I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me And I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood to Tony Then I repented of my sins And won the victory Oh, victory in Jesus My Savior forever He sought me of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day I'll sing up there a song of victory oh victory and Jesus my Savior We celebrate, we go forth into the world. We go in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to what is good. Do not return evil for evil. Strengthen the faint hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted and guard the dignity of all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. We'll tell your story. You could join us on Zoom here in just a few minutes. Uh, you can find the link to it in the password. We had some issues last week. We got it smoothed out now, though. We would love for you to join us in that. 
We would also love for you to join us on Wednesdays. Uh, we have a, a Bible study that's dealing how to deal scripturally with anxiety and fear and uh, those kind of things. That's going to be at 545. There'll be a link for that as well. And then also the women's Bible study at 7 o'clock on Wednesday too, both through Zoom at this point. Our website is geared up for all kind of information as well. If you missed the Monday Thursday service, you can find that on our website. Uh, you can find links to all of the music by Dave and everything else there too as we go forward. So have a wonderful rest of the day. I can't wait to see you again. Uh, I love you, and so does Jesus. Talk to you soon. <laughs>